to Convo Fango today. We've got our special South by Southwest edition. We've got Addison, Madeline, and Zach joining us to talk about hypochondriac. Yay! All right, by the time people watch this, it will have already premiered. But right now, as we're recording, this is very exciting because you're getting ready for the premiere, like at this very moment. Literally, I'm going to go put on my clothing as soon as we're done and try to look fancy and not scared. Yeah. So I'm doing it. We're if you do just admit that you're not wearing pants right now, but you will be wearing pants after the interview. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not. I'm wearing pants. Okay. okay. The pants I'm going to be wearing tonight. Not They're your, different pants. Gotcha. Gotcha. Pants. gotcha. Okay. Yes, my fancy pants. As fancy well. pants, exactly. We're wearing I'm casual involved. pants right now. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting a pedicure right now off camera. You can't see. But, you know. <laughs> I need to take a lesson from you. That's smart. I love that, like, multitasking at multitasking. its best. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what uh, Hypochondriac is about. Yeah. So uh, Hypochondriac is a gay horror movie based off my mental breakdown. Uh, but uh, we can talk about that later. What it's about <laughs> is it's basically about um, a young Potter, Will who um, is actually having a pretty good life. He's got a good job, his boss is annoying, but you know, overall he's got a good boyfriend. Love you, love you, love you, Betty. Um, he's got a good boyfriend, he's got a good life. Um, but you know, when he was a child, his mother was bipolar and after a pretty violent incident kind of separated from her. Um, and now it's 18 years later and she's come back into his life and starts calling him and leaving mysterious voicemails telling him not to trust his friends. And while that's going on, he injures himself at work and starts to be convinced that something may be wrong with his body. And as that's happening, a man in a wolf's costume starts haunting him. And so <laughs> Will bad. now has Very to go on this triple journey to figure out what's wrong and hopefully get to the other side without taking other people with him. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it was very casually. And on top of that, there's a wolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also, it's like, okay. it's like three things. And then well, that's the thing. it's a mental breakdown, right? So uh -huh. it's like this, the a mental breakdown happens only happens, but well, not only, I don't want to speak for everybody, but for me, it happened when like, it's a story of how I cracked. So in order mm -hmm. to crack, everything had to pound on me. So you're just, it's just the story of him being bludgeoned at a bunch of different edges until he cracks. And right. so that has to include a shitty boss, an injury at work, voicemails from his mother, and a mysterious wolf mm -hmm. in the corner. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> horror. It is a horror. Horror. Oh, horror. Horror. Oh, horror. horror. <laughs> this really adds to it, though. You got to do like the wiggly jazz hand fingers. Yes, hands. There you go, everyone, all together now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, theater. Funny. I'm terrified already. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> oh man, my background is showing. I'm all like, hello, my honey. Hello. <laughs> You're yeah. suddenly the WB frog and you just like prance across the screen. <laughs> Thousand. Yes. Yeah. That's, he's actually he's very influential in all of my work. Yeah. <laughs> your biggest influence in your career. Yes. <laughs> so the movie starts off with based on a real breakdown. And then it just goes totally like insane, like all these things. And you're like, like you're saying, it's like, it's, it's already too much. And then there's stuff yeah. being added. And I'm like, well, shit, who wouldn't have a breakdown during this? But I'm right. wondering like how much of it is autobiographical? How much of it is fictionalized? Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to hear the story of my mental breakdown? Let's it's hear. fun. That's Great. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Can I'm just going to preface this with you. You approach this whole thing with like such a sense of humor, which makes it like it, it's dark as shit. But it's yeah. not like like it's not bleak watching this. You don't well, watch it and it's unwatchable. Right. No. And that's like honestly a super important thing. I, I'll say this at the screening tonight because, you know, it, it deals with stuff. That, it deals with stuff. It's hard. Mental illness is hard and it deals with mental illness. But at the end of the day, I'm still here. So, you know what? I'm still here. And so that's where I where I took the story from. Um, but let's rewind back to a sultry December 2018. <laughs> Um, it's not sultry. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so basically, um, the story is, so my mom suffers from mental illness. She suffers specifically from bipolar disorder, mostly in the mania and, uh, and, and schizophrenia kind of, kind of, kind of vibe, a lot of paranoia and all that kind of stuff. And it started manifesting when I was 12 and she would spend roughly about six months a year in these manic episodes. Um, and so cut to, you know, cut to me much later out of college, I'm home for Christmas and I'm the only one staying with her at the time. 
and you know she's being her casual normal emotionally abusive self that i've been used to but at, at this point i'm like you know what i'm gonna go here for three days i'm gonna do my due diligence at christmas and then i'll leave and it'll be fine so i just like smoke a bunch of weed and try to surround myself with the fog right just be like if i could just keep this fog here then nothing really matters um but unfortunately i come back to la and the fog's still there and i'm not smoking weed anymore and all of a sudden nausea starts coming along and dizziness and i have these tingles up and down my body and i'm like i don't understand what's going on so rather than see a doctor i visited dr google um we're homies uh i did a lot of viewing uh her a lot um but basically i, I you know i i typed in all my symptoms and they told me that i was dying of aos and uh i now know i suffer from ocd not not the the ticks uh, physical ticks but uh, and mentally um, I suffer from intrusive thoughts and I have trouble delineating fact from fiction and I will I will literally hone on things that have no basis in reality, hence the ALS. But I didn't know this at the time. I was like, yes, I'm dying of ALS. And like the early onset, it's so funny, the early onset things are like dizziness and weakness and fatigue. And I'm just like, one night of drinking and hello, or just existing <laughs> as a human, like, come on. Um, but I was focused on it and I was like, this is happening. And so I was producing some short films at the time and I was working at a, at a very terrible job um, uh, that is not a pottery studio, but was a production company. And I, it was very physical labor. Uh, but I found out later as a production assistant and I was lifting these 80, uh, 90 pound lights up and down stairs with a freight elevator for prep and wrap. And that's not the production assistant's job. And I didn't know that at the time. So I was just kind of doing it, but I was also trying to prove to myself that I wasn't dying of ALS, right? And the only way to do that is by physically exerting my body, showing that I can prove to myself that I do this. So that unfortunately leads to a, a repetitive strain injury in both of my arms. But I didn't know that at the time. I thought that just solidified the mind-body connection is here. I Googled my symptoms. I'm now suffering from the symptoms. This is the only option and I cracked. And so and I remember um, I was, I was uh, like, you know, it's been about like three weeks of constant Googling and I was at home and my mom called me and I hadn't picked up the phone for a while because she's, and this, meanwhile, while this is happening, she's leaving me voicemails telling me not to trust my friends um, and telling me that things are not wrong. And I'm just like, and I'm in this space where I'm like, maybe she's right. And she calls me and I finally pick up the phone and I, and she goes, hi Lindo, how are you? And I'm like, um, and I just start sobbing. I just started uncontrollably sobbing because I was not okay. And a miracle opened up. My mom was there for me. She was my mom for the first time in so long. She broke through her psychosis, which if you know anything about bipolar disorder, is near impossible. But for some reason she opened up and she was there for me and she took care of me. And that's after that phone call, I realized that it was like, I'm not okay, I need to go home. And so I go home to my dad for about a month. And I fixed myself mentally, but like, it's, it's rough going. I'm like having all sorts of, and that's the thing. I thought that I knew what a panic attack was, you know, I thought a panic attack was like, starts in my chest, deep breathing. And then like, that was, it was, but I started getting crazy mental symptoms that I'd never experienced before, like huge jutting shocks up and down my body and stuff like that. And I was like, this can't possibly be a panic attack. Or like, I forgot how to breathe at one point. I was, I like, I couldn't breathe without focusing on it and I couldn't fall asleep. So I had to take enough Xanax to just get me to bed. And, you know, while I'm there, my dad's probably unhelpful. He's not a bad guy. He just does not understand mental illness mm -hmm. the way that me, my sisters, and obviously my mom do. But, you know, I, I, I end up very fortunately having a good therapist and getting on med. So I start to fix myself mentally. Unfortunately, my injuries are still there because those were self-inflicted accidentally. But mm -hmm. all the doctors are just telling me that it's a mental, uh, not mental, uh, uh, a muscle injury. Um, turns out it was actually extreme tendonitis and I didn't know it. So I got back to LA and I did the most LA thing I've ever done is I visited a holistic massage therapist and that, that guy really reined in on my arms, but because it was a tendon thing and not a muscle thing, he inflamed them. And I injured my arms to the point where I couldn't lift my phone. I couldn't oh text. I couldn't shave. And so I was basically on the couch because while I was at my dad's place trying to outrun the anxiety, I was on a stationary bike, ended up injuring my hip flexor joint that would shoot pains up and down my leg. So I'm also hobbling at this point as well. And so I can't really move. Uh, and I finally get a doctor to prescribe me physical therapy, but he's like, you have to spend time waiting for the pain to go away because if not, like you're going to 
like you're going to just injure it more. Mm-hmm. And so I do. I watch a lot of Scandinavian detective dramas on Netflix. Every country, I know Denmark's 15 true detective ripoffs, and in Norway, it's like 13 true detective ripoffs. So if you need one, I got you. No worries. I mean, just love like a seasoned veteran and like a young white woman being like, where is the murderer? You know? And that's just like, Did you watch like, Shetland? What? Did you get into Shetland? I haven't seen no. I haven't seen Shipland. <laughs> I watched. There's a Icelandic one called Trapped that was like pretty good, and um, there's other ones. But now I'm blanking because I got I got offset. You you fucked up my jokes, Patty. Thank you. <laughs> um, no. Uh, so so basically that's what I did. You know, I, I sat I, I sat there for twelve hours a day. I had a regimented meal schedule because it was like all I could do, and I ordered from the same place every day. I had an assistant come over to like assistant my friend. Aiden came over and shaved me and, and did all the things I did that I couldn't do myself. And I tried to get better. And then there was a moment I tried to lift five pounds and it finally was successful and it was coming on. But then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, the fog just came back. So like the fog just started showing up and then the dizziness and the nausea. And I was like, what is happening? So I called my aunt, who's a doctor, who I could have called all this time, but I was too embarrassed to be with then. And I was like, aunt Vicky, this is what's going on. Like, these are the things going on in my, in my, in my life. And she's like, I don't want to scare you, Addison, but these are symptoms very uh, connected with multiple sclerosis. I think you should go see a neurologist. And I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And, you know, ALS is sister disease. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's close. So I'm like, I can't believe, am I actually, is this actually happening? Like that, the thing that I actually willed into existence is actually happening. Uh, no pun intended, the character's name as well. Um, which I didn't do on purpose, but we did make a lot of oh. jokes about it. Um, now you just got to claim it and be like, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. conscious decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, um, so I visit the neurologist and she asked me to email her and she's like, just tell me what's going on. And in speech to text, cause I still couldn't type. I was like, okay, here's what's going on. And I send her like a five page poorly misspelled opus of just everything that happened and she's like come in let's see you and she tests me and she gives me an mri we test my muscles we test my nerves and all those things and a week goes by and i get the test results and everything it it turns negative and clear and all my symptoms go away so that is the real story of the of the movie and i was writing it kind of as therapy in the beginning uh, in the middle of it, my my, ther- my physical therapist was like, I know you're a writer, you should write. And so I had like two pillows, two ice packs against the wall. And I wrote for an hour and wrote there a very bad version of this script that now exists because I was avoiding talking about my mother, which is what the actual movie wants to be about. And so rather than the actual events, I mean, there are peppered through like all the dad scenes are like word for word stuff that we talked about. You know, th- those are, I mean, I didn't hallucinate a wolf, but you know, once you start, once I started actually forming this stuff and wrote about my mother and thought about what I wanted, to do with this story it was less like let's tell the exact story and more let's tell let me tell an emotional retelling of what it's like to crack right. let me make you break down while i break down or have the feelings of it at least and go on this journey towards ultimately accepting that i needed help and asking for it right i love that though because it's more about your you're capturing a feeling as you're watching it i was quite anxious watching it in the way that yeah. it's edited and then like there's things cutting back and forth and then there's parts where like will is like mirrored and like double and just it's all very it becomes very uncomfortable watching it right so it's like you yeah. have this kind of like it like starts this little seed of like anxiousness and it just gets tighter and like grows as you're watching the movie and it right. goes on so yeah well done and, and on that's that. yeah thanks i mean and that's true like you know that while he, he's being haunted like we use this the man in the wolf costume it's a very very obvious metaphor and if somebody has a different metaphor then like i welcome it because like the art's no longer mine when it's out but for me the wolf is a re- representation of his the physical manifestation of his childhood trauma it's not bad inherently it's just there we all have our wolves right it doesn't mean the wolves are bad but we have them and will's you know uh flaw is that he won't acknowledge the wolf and so the wolf does all the things he can to make himself noticed. That means being violent, growing more grotesque, appearing in places that you don't want him to. But ultimately, like, even at the end, which I won't spoil, but like the, the whole idea is like, we get to the point where I'm okay, right? I'm still here. Mm-hmm. So we all have our wolves and we're all going to move forward. It takes work, but if we can surround ourselves with a support system and ask for help when we need it, that is the starting point to the journey of navigating through your trauma and your mental health. And that's ultimately what I was trying to tell with the story. Amazing. And when you guys read the script, what about it made you decide like you want to be a part of telling the story? Jack? Uh, sure, I'll jump. Um, I'll jump, I'll jump. I'm in, coach. 
Um, I, Don't jump the computer on your lap, Zach. Don't do no, that. I won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I basically, you know, th this, this job, this opportunity came to me, you know, most, uh, most do for actors, you know, you, you're in the pool with um, a bunch of other, you know, theoretically capable people to be able to do the job. Um, and as Maddie and I, you know, and Addison talked in our first hang, it's like when you're invited to the party, the, your cast, it's like, oh, I can actually do what I know how to do now, you know? <laughs> um, and, and so a lot, there's not a lot of, um, I guess, autonomy when it comes to, you know, saying like, you know, I can't like call up Spielberg and be like, hey, you know, um, I'd really love to be in uh, the, the next yeah. EP. That would be amazing. Can we work that out? Um, you know, and it, it, it just doesn't quite work like that. And so you, you kind of have the synergy of uh, roles finding you at certain times in your life. And um, for me as an actor, and I think all actors, your life experience, you know, really prepares you uh, just as much as any technique or um, prep that you can do once you know the script. And this was one of those moments where uh, I opened that email, I read the sides quickly, and um, I knew immediately, I was like, oh, this is, this is something special. Um, I've had, I've had thing, you know, uh, projects that kind of touched on themes of mental illness uh, in the past, but, <clears throat> but nothing was, nothing like rang true in the same way that, that uh, Addison's script did for me. And that's because a lot of my life experience involves mental illness. There's that, it, 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 it runs through my family, um, you know, and, and it manifests differently for, for a lot of people, but I think that it's just not talked about, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it more often than not, once you start getting under the hood, uh, people have a relationship to mental illness, whether it's uh, small or, or severe, um, it's a lot more common than we think. Um, and it's stigmatized. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 that, that whole thing of asking for help when you're suffering from something, that's, that's hard to do with, 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 you know, with any trauma, um, you know, or, or any challenge in life, addiction. It's, it's, we all think we can go it alone until we can't. And then we have to ask for help. And, uh, but, but in, in our world, especially today, I mean, it is getting better, but you know, there's a difference between like a, a woke Instagram post of saying like, do these five things when you're having a panic attack versus like actually getting medical help and actually having friends and family understand where you're coming from. It's such a complicated issue. It's so, uh, it's, it's so subtle and, um, you know, and, and, and difficult to, to communicate what that experience is like unless you've lived it. And I had the privilege, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, of living uh, a lot of those experiences. And a lot of my experiences ran parallel to Addison, uh, to Addison's life. And um, I was like, oh yeah, a CD, yeah, cool. And I think the first scene that I, that I auditioned with, you know, was basically having a panic attack or helping someone through a panic attack mm -hmm. and then having one myself in the-, in the, yeah. in the Those session. are the two sides, yeah. One, yeah, and I was one, like, <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. from, And then having one, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, get someone out of a panic attack, check, did that last week and uh, uh, have a panic attack. I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem, um, cool. <laughs> Um, oh, there's a cat in the scene. Perfect. Here, come here, kitty. This is my cat. You're and so you know, you get my cat was featured, and that's probably why I got the role. Frankly, um, she was the cat. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, a thousand percent. Um, you know, it's like a child actor. You put them on screen, they just know what to do. Um, but uh, the the thing the thing is is it, it's true. It's uh, I I just I just really felt a kinship to the material, and um, and it just found me at the right time. I think. Love that. Madeline, what was your like feeling when you first came across the script? I'm for you, you bring a lot of levity to it, so it's like a lot different. But I imagine there's things that resonated with you when you read this that made you want to tell this story. Yeah, so I, I think um, I I first of all like really needed a job. Like at the time, I was like I called Michelle Lewitt, like kind of cold called her, and I was we were like talking on Clubhouse at that time. I was like, is there anything? Your work. I really, really need, I just need to work. I just really need to, and she's like, okay, I've got some things I'll, I'll let you know. She's like, would you want to read for something? I said, yes, 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 I'll read for something. But then I, I read the script and I really loved it. I loved the character of Blossom initially. It was just like the sides and the scenes. And I was like, ooh, I get to play a female predator and um, sexually harass uh, a, an, uh, an employee. Like how, how empowering. <laughs> <laughs> and how fun. I've been on I've been on the other side of that. Uh, and so it's very nice to feel on the other side of that. And that's the whole fun of being an actor is to is to be able to like 
be on both sides of the coin, the person mm -hmm. being dumped and the person doing the dumping. I've been on both sides and getting mm -hmm. to explore all, all the different levels of it. And I think we all, after this, the last two years, we all have dealt with mental illness. If we, if it wasn't, if it wasn't in your face before, then, you know, these last two years have, it's both to the surface something everybody's got some form of it it's just that we don't call it that necessarily it's like oh jenny's just always kind of a bummer or like um sam is just you know he's always really hyper and it's like way too a little bit tone it down a notch so everybody's got their thing it just might not be labeled but yeah i mean i've definitely dealt with depression uh and in terms of like the the little wolf i definitely feel like the thing that that addison was saying about it being i i would call it yeah the trauma but i just called the wounded inner child like it's just such the wounded inner child that like that's been so traumatized and so shut that um that it doesn't have a normal face anymore like it has a fear face and an anger face and an unprocessed emotion face um mm -hmm. so i definitely have done lots having been a child actor, I've done lots and lots and lots of work with my wounded inner child to try to bring her back into like love and like wholeness and to, and to like be gentle with her. Cause she might have not quite had like a, a scary, like wolf face at first, but like, but like definitely was in trauma, you know? And, and then, so then it, you know, you come to a place where you learn to love those parts of yourself into wholeness again. So anything having it that brings some light to that and some um, authenticity, because it really happened to Addison, you know, not dealing with it in a cheesy way. I mean, the movie does a great job from the part that I watched so far. Um, and I can't wait to watch the rest. I just got the link, so it just started happening. Um, but it's such a subjective experience. And that's the thing that's hard to communicate about mental illness. It's the thing that's painful to communicate because other people, you're really good at hiding it a lot of the time. So I definitely resonated with that. And um, yeah, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be a part of it. I yeah. love that. And I also love what you said, Addison, about like that first draft was kind of just, it, it was like a, it was a shoddy pass at what you wanted to say, you know, it was there, but you weren't yeah. going to go all the way there and be that honest with it because it's like, this is very, very vulnerable. And to even, like, you could have told the story and not say, like, this is based on a real breakdown, whatever. You could have just been like, eh, here's right. a story that I wrote. But to, like, own right. that and claim it and, like, put that right out there, right out front, I'm like, that takes a lot of courage. So very Thanks. amazing that you that you did that. <laughs> Thanks. No, I appreciate it. You know, it's funny because, like, I feel like there's, like, a pre and a post mental breakdown me, as obviously there would be, um, of that, like, what I find important, what, what, what kind of stories are important for me to tell and also like i'm not trying to be like i'm the i'm the poster boy of hypochondria but like but in a, but in a way it's like the reason i think i i i one have to claim the story and two um want to claim further stories moving forward especially when dealing with mental health is because of the conversations that i have when i tell the story mm -hmm. you know and it's like it's not like we're trying to trauma bond but it's just like ever and this, this is the thing too it's like people are like oh well i mean nothing like that happened to me but like this small thing happened to me and i'm like no that's your wolf mm -hmm. then you experience the pain that i experienced it doesn't matter how big or small your problem was whether or not your coworker was mean to you or your mom's emotionally abusive or someone's physically abusive or you know you experienced like uh, you know any type of persecution like uh, along the along the way you feel you feel that and we all have that and so I think you know in terms of me as a storytelling moving forward starting with this feature you know I was a writer producer before this my first directing experience mainly because you know it happened to me so I was like well I mean I know and how it looks so I should probably do it um but like what's important to me is to tell you know queer stories and and in the horror and, and genre space that, that involve mental health because that's just what's important to me and I think the more that we can have movies in which people go, that's me, then the less alone we'll feel. You know, what did we do when we turned to the pandemic? What did we do? We turned to our TVs. We watch stories because stories are the things that we can unite under. You know, you can watch, you know, something like Drive My Car and you can feel a part of these people. And by the end, you're sobbing because you feel the emotion, you feel what it's like to be human. And that's why I go to the movies and I, I'll get off my soapbox. But like, I, you know, that's like, that's what, that's why I want to tell movies and that's the kind of movies I want to take. So I, if I can't claim it, then I, I don't want to, I shouldn't be making them, you know? Yeah. I'm so glad you stepped off the soapbox so I can step right on. The, the, 
Switch. Uh, no, no, no. It's, true, it's true though. Like, listen, listen. It, it's it's catharsis, right? Like, I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm I come at writing from a song a songwriting perspective. You know, I write songs. I don't write words. Absence of talent in uh, in this group of that. Thank and you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Um, and, and it's, but it's but it's but, but I think that. I think that art often serves as a, you know, it's a vehicle for catharsis for whoever's creating it, whether you're a creative artist, like a choreographer or a writer or an interpretive artist, um, you know, as an actor or a dancer or performer, et cetera, um, or a class musician, even like, you know, interpreting something that someone's wrote. It's like you are using the medium, whether you're creating it in real time or interpreting it, you're using it to find some sort of catharsis and discovery about yourself and, and what it means to be alive. And then, you know, the beautiful part of it is that it's, it's, it's like blockchain, right? It's like uh, it's a very hip thing right now the kids are doing. Um, and it's like, you know, there's- You don't like, understand it even a little bit, but continue yeah, yeah. with your metaphor. Well, there's, there, there's, 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 a yeah. there's, there's a record, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a record of, of uh, the game of telephone is a more antiquated, you know, uh, metaphor. It's like, it's like we, in, in, in doing something for us as artists, it serves us in our development, but whoever's watching it or witnessing it, it, you know, uh, it, it, I think it enlightens their experience. And um, the, it, it's actually a funny shift for me because I was thinking about, you know, Maddie's work and role. And she and I, you know, have these, have these slightly more comedic, for lack of a better term, moments. And her work is so brilliant and her character and, and the other characters in the film that bring like, you know, a, a comedic levity to it or an amusement levity to it is unique. Um, you know, similar to some of the films like Donnie Darko, it's like you have these, you have these like um, these, 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 these tonal shifts that are true to life, right? Like dealing with mental illness isn't all like, oh God, it's so bad. It's terrible. I'm seeing things. I'm going to go to the mental hospital. And then, uh, uh, you know, it's like, it's not all doomsday all the time. Right. We're, you know, we're humans. It goes up and down. And so, so I think the movie does an amazing job of, of capturing, you know, just the, the uh, the confusion and the spectrum of feeling that one has going through a process like that. Right, and I, I'm I'm glad you brought up Donnie Darko because let's call out the bunny suit man in the room. Like obviously <laughs> that's oh my like God. my main inspiration. Um, but like I think a reason why I think that movie is so special, special to me and a lot of other people is like for, like in that movie you have like sparkle motion, you have the dancing, you have the egregious teacher who's reading from the textbook, you have Patrick Swayze being a ham, and then you also have Donnie with his mother sitting on a bed, and he's like, how does it feel to have a wacko for its son and she says it feels fantastic and that's in the same movie and that's what i wanted you know what i mean like that that and that's i think the way to describe i mean because it's again it's a mental breakdown right and now it, it's hilarious in certain moments like you know there was this might be too tvma and i apologize so just stop me if this is too gross um but like you know i was on antidepressants right my arms didn't work right i'm a person who needs to occasionally relieve myself of certain things, right? So I, I buy, buy, bought a flash, uh, flashlight, flashlight and a wall mount and put it at the wall and <laughs> I'm on antidepressants. So it's very difficult for me to finish. And so there would be times, like one of the times where it would be an hour. And I, at that point, I'd be just like, I'm not even, I don't wanna do this anymore. I just wanna be done with this. But if I stop now, I'm gonna experience 24 hours of major pain. And so I'm just here <laughs> waiting for the gods to just let me release my goddamn self. And nah, never did, ne ne never did come to fruition. And that happened have, more than once. I've never been in an interview where somebody's been so honest <laughs> and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, that's the thing, it's that fucking is, stupid. You relieved <laughs> all of us. You give yeah. us all of us. <laughs> that was incredible. Did you write that into like deleted scenes or something? You guys just no, got that. There was, there, there was a there was a rare real conversation. Zach, did you know about the flashlight scene? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing oh, yes. is I texted my producer because I was thinking about adding it because it was a story I told to like to to pitch it a lot and people were like and which is you know it's a thing I mean it's true and so I but I'm like I'm like what would it like what do you think about having Will fuck a flashlight but it auto corrected to flashlight. And so for 24 hours, my producer <laughs> was trying to placate me into, into justifying a scene in which he fucks a flashlight. And then when we talked, I was like, no, 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 no. That's not, not, that's not what I was trying to do, I swear. That sounds um, dangerous. Anyway. I don't know. Flashlight, yeah, yes. No, flashlight, I don't, I don't know. 
<laughs> we're making a different movie. Like, I'm not Lars von Trier. Like, I'm not trying to cut off a clitoris and show it. You know, like that's not that's not what I'm trying to do. God bless him, but like, not 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 my not my type of. It just wasn't story. this movie. That was not your yeah, vision. Just a, yes. Yeah. One day I'll hire Willem Dafoe to get smacked in the dick and ejaculate blood, but it is not this movie. <laughs> Oh man, I just went from <laughs> fucking NC seventeen. I'm so sorry. Um, I I'll go. I'll just. I'll just <laughs> I mean, if there's anywhere to do it, Fangoria is the place. So you're you're good. <laughs> I, I figured. That's why I was like, I think it was you're okay. You're totally fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the flashlight fucker music uh, movie is coming soon. That's a different. Yes, it's not yes, this movie. It, it's eventually. No, it's not this movie, and it's not the next movie. But we're we're in talks with Netflix. They're having a new section that's just like movies that are too fucked up that you have to pay extra for, um, and you have to show proof of ID. You have to be forty years old and above. And nice. so I won't be able to even watch my own movie for a bit. Um, then you have something to look forward to when you turn we 40, do. you know? Yes, Flashlight really Fuckers Anonymous. I could finally we, watch this. <laughs> we all do. And that's the title. I don't know how you guessed that. Good for you. We're having a good time. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys, this has been so much fun. Do you want to add any last minute things before we go? I mean, how do you how do you top that? There's exactly. No of, like, like, where do we go from that. here? Where do we go from here? <laughs> To the draft house where we premiere. Yay! Pop, pop press. Pop yeah. press. <laughs> I'm on my way to the draft house also, but in LA for Evil Dead. So I will be there with you guys in spirit. Ooh, hell yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've already awesome. seen it. Yeah, you, you got it. I, I, well, it's fun to see you with an audience, though, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm like, looking forward to it. Being on the couch I'm with my dogs is different than like an audience of people like experiencing these emotions and being like, oh, fuck. At the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zach, are you in Texas also? Are you? Going yeah, to- I'm. I'm here. Okay, cool. I'm outside the city in my uh, in my lovely Airbnb situation. Nice. Show him the llama. With this llama. Oh, llama! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, five star review. This this host is killing it. Um, <laughs> Uh, just no, really, truly. It's I, I love this city. You know, I, I've come through for a couple like music gigs in the past, but I've never really been able to sit down for a week. Like. I got a week, and, you know, and also like I haven't had a real vacation since, oh, I don't know, this thing called COVID happened. So, <laughs> you know, when we got into South by, I was like, oh, thank God, a reason to leave <laughs> my house to do this. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and I was, oh, whatever. thank God, my career is not dead. Right. You know what I mean? We all, we all have different excitements. Well, that's exactly, you know, invited to another party. But, you know, if you're super famous and successful like Maddie, you just keep working and you can't go to your premiere because you're, crushing it so yeah and no, i have to at- audition and jump through as many hoops as ever yeah. <laughs> i have to audition for every little tiddly wink that i get yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for any of it because oh. i've been doing this for 34 years bro so, yeah listen bro veteran oh, it never gets easier you know we in the <laughs> trenches but it's true <laughs> um I mean, and, and on that note, you know, I think that I think it's a testament to to the story, the passion behind it. And, you know, the team that like it was like day two or three. And I was like, oh, we're all like on the same page here. This isn't just an indie movie that it's like, you know, like I think everyone again, this speaks to the universality of what I was talking about earlier with mental illness. It's like it's like these themes, whether you're making a horror or drama or rom-com or whatever. It's like when something like this and this truth you know, steps into the room in the form of Addison's script. It's like everybody sensed that. And I think like day two, three, it was like, oh, oh, we're making something important. Not only is it a cool movie and a unique movie, and it's like, you know, kind of screw whatever, you know, I, I think people see, because because people are going to love it or they're going to hate it. And that's art. You know what I mean? Like everybody's going to have their own interpretation. But what what I what I think is undeniable is that there there are important things being discussed that you know, uh, through the guise of, of, of art and, and, uh, and it exists and we're here at South by and everybody's fantastic in it. The crew crushed it. The cast killed it. And it, it, it was, you know, as Addison says, I'm going to steal your moment here, (laughs) but you, you, you know, you, you often say it's, it's, it's our movie. It's, we all, we all made this. And, um, and that again, just speaks to, you know, him knowing how to be an amazing director and, (laughs) and be like, yeah, we all have a part to play. So it's like, you know, because that's rare. Um, it's rare for someone to really understand that, that we all have to kind of bring our best. And that's what, what special projects, like, that's what they contain. And um, so, yeah, I'm just really happy to be here. I'm stoked. We're going we're gonna to have some beers. We're going to eat some chicken wings while we watch this thing. It's going to be amazing. Maybe the case, though. I don't think I could eat chicken wings. No. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. I'm just going to watch my like... mental breakdown being like, oh, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> right? 
How's my breath? How's my breath? Is this okay for the talk back afterwards? Oh, okay. Thank you, Alamo Draft House. Fantastic. Great talk. Though. As you just have like buffalo sauce like on the side of your face. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, on, and on your mask, which you like have, and you're like, should I wear this? Should I not wear this? <laughs> you do the, the half seas, like the like, yeah. off on, off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Party, yes. I can cry if I want to. I'm going to eat chicken wings in my premiere. I'm going to eat chicken wings in my premiere. 2022. <laughs> You know, you live your best life. This is a South by Southwest <laughs> premiere. You eat those chicken wings. Yeah. You guys can um, FaceTime Madeline in, you know, you just have like a little. Uh, please do. I mean, I'm so, <laughs> I'm literally like so sad. I'm, I'm there in spirit. I, I love you guys. You're just fantastic humans and super talented. And that's the best combo. So I'm, mm. I'm sad that I'm not there, but um, yeah, we miss you. Uh, I'm there in spirit. And I, I watched oh, yeah. the movie today, like, so that I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of there, like. <laughs> you're with us, you're with yes. us, as you always were. Yeah. You're there, you're there. Your, your energy, your spirit is filling up the theater. I'm you're sending there. it. Yeah. Your that soul is captured from, from, forever. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> your soul is captured forever on yes. film. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't want to be the one to say it, but Zach said it, and it's true. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, we're all doomed. Great. Yeah. Forever. Forever. Right. Yeah, a lot of pieces of me are out there. Then I don't know. I'm quite sure, but I feel like <laughs> souls are infinite. So. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, that's a great oh, ending, though. That's that's. We can't talk that. There, you taught me. Souls are infinite. Cut. All right. Yeah. Souls are infinite. <laughs> Fleshlight. Fleshlight. Souls infinite. are infinite. I mean, this Fleshlight. really covered a lot of ground, you guys. <laughs> This interview, just as tonally wild as Donnie Darko, we basically just recreated it again. Good there you go. We, this we is did it, Joe. We did it. Does. We did it, Joe. This is what Joe. Addison does. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> this is one of the weirdest fucking interviews I've ever done, and I say that in, like, the most complimentary fashion. I'm like, we were talking about fucking flashlights. Flashlights, not that weird. Flashlights, a little bit weirder. Okay. And then we got real weird. deep, and, like, souls are infinite, and, like, I'm, we were, like, everywhere on this. Yeah. <laughs> You guys took me on a journey, and I'm here for it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank we you. got llamas. Thank Angel, you guided us. Oh, yeah, truly. nice. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, you guys. I'm excited for everyone to check it out.